Immunoglobulin G, or IgG, is a type of antibody that plays an important role in our body's defense against pathogens. IgG is important in opsonizing bacteria, fixing complement, and directly neutralizing toxins. There are a lot of facts you need to remember about IgG, so here's my visual mnemonic so you can keep the facts straight on test day. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to meet the genie. You know that guy in Aladdin who just pops out and fulfills wishes? Well, today's my lucky day, since I found this old lamp while cleaning out my kitchen. And wham! It's the genie! By the way, doesn't the word genie remind you of the letter G? I mean, come on. Genie sounds like G, and even starts with the letter G. Also notice how this genie has his arms spread out as he emerges from the lamp. This makes him look Y-shaped, kind of like an antibody, don't you think? Putting this together, this antibody-shaped genie should remind you of IgG, or immunoglobulin G. As an immunoglobulin, IgG is a type of antibody made by B cells. It's actually the most common antibody in the blood. You need to be able to differentiate IgG from other types of antibodies, so sit tight to learn all about IgG. Now here's my dilemma. This genie gave me wishes, but it's pretty hard to come up with what I want on the spot. These are life-changing wishes, you know? Since I'm thinking so slowly, this genie is impatiently looking at the kitchen timer. While the genie waits, let me tell you that the timer here actually has a deeper meaning. It symbolizes a delay. You know, since you gotta wait for the timer to finish. Fittingly, IgG is part of the delayed antibody response to an antigen, meaning that it takes a while for our body to produce IgG after it first encounters a new threat. If you watched our video on IgM, you would know that IgM is the default type of antibody produced by B cells, and therefore fastest to respond to a new threat. In contrast, IgG takes longer since B cells need to undergo class switching first before producing IgG. Since B cells class switching from IgM to IgG takes time, it takes a while for IgG to be produced, leading to a delayed IgG response. Even though IgG has a delayed response to an antigen the first time, they are actually the more effective fighter. IgG antibodies are found at higher levels and can do things like opsonization that IgM cannot. Again, remember this genie and patiently looking at the timer to remind you of the delayed response of IgG. Now turn your attention to the genie's other hand that is passing straight through the food wrap. Of course, genies have a lot of magical powers, and it looks like one of them is passing through walls, right? This ability to pass through membranes is actually not unique to genies. IgG can do it too. Specifically, because of its small size, IgG can cross the placenta. This makes IgG the only antibody that has this ability. Maternal IgG antibodies crossing through into the baby not only helps protect the newborn in their first six months of life, but also, importantly, causes pathology like erythroblastosis fatalis. This is a condition where maternal antibodies cross over to attack the blood cells of the fetus, usually due to a mismatch in Rh antigens. The antibody type implicated is IgG, and you can bet that this will come up on test day. Okay, let's keep moving to see exactly how IgG fights pathogens. So what was that membrane the genie was passing through anyways? You got it, it was food wrap. We are in the kitchen, so it makes sense that there is food wrap. Actually, food wrap is a great symbol for opsonization, one of the major roles of IgG. Opsonization refers to coating something to make it look more edible by phagocytosis to macrophages and neutrophils. Coating things to make it more edible is done by food wrap in real life, but by IgG in our immune system. Basically, when a pathogen is freely floating around, they are not easily noticeable by phagocytic cells. IgG attaching to or coating a pathogen acts kind of like an eat me sign, making it easier for phagocytes to recognize and swallow up pathogens. For extra points, you can remember that IgG antibodies have both an antigen binding region as well as a constant region called FC. This FC is the stem of the Y, and it is recognized by FC receptors on neutrophils and macrophages. 
Phagocytosis by these cells enables clearance of the infection or antigen presentation leading to the adaptive immune response. So, just like how food wrap coats your food, marking it as edible, IgG opsonizes or coats bacteria and other bugs to make them more edible. Got that? Let's move on. Next, turn to the computer on the counter. With my first wish, I decided to get a new computer to look up new recipes. This computer should remind you of compliment. You know, since computer sounds like compliment. IgG fixes compliment, which is just a fancy way of saying that IgG attracts complement proteins to bind to it, starting the classical complement pathway. You can watch our videos on complement activation to learn more, but the ability of IgG to fix complement is very important because the complement system is one of the ways our body can kill things marked by IgG. Complement activation culminates in the killing of pathogens by poking holes in their membranes and attracting other immune cells to the sites. Note that IgG is not the only antibody that can do this. IgM can as well. And IgM actually does this better than IgG. But I just thought I'd include this here, since an ability to fix complement is one of the details test writers can include to help you narrow your choices down to IgM or IgG. Finally, turn to the spray bottle in my hand. I was cleaning my kitchen, right? To keep my kitchen free from nasty germs, I use this bug neutralizing spray. This brings us to our final point about IgG, because the bug neutralizing spray is here to remind us that IgG directly neutralizes toxins or antigens on pathogens. Get it? Because this neutralizing spray literally neutralizes microbes and toxins that could hurt us, just like IgG. Well, actually, IgG binds to and covers up active sites on pathogens and toxins making it harder for them to infect cells or cause damage. This is different from simply flagging the pathogen as is done in opsonization or fixation of complement, since during neutralization, IgG antibody directly takes care of the threat without enlisting the help of other immune cells. But because our body wants to make sure that we clear pathogens, IgG antibodies do all three things we mentioned. Opsonization, complement fixation, and neutralization. All right, we're done here. Let's recap quickly so I can get the rest of my wishes to the genie. Immunoglobulin G, or IgG, is the most abundant type of antibody in blood. It plays an important role in fighting off pathogens and infection. After exposure to a new antigen, the production of IgG is delayed, or slower than IgM, due to the need for class switching to produce IgG. Because of its small size, IgG is the only antibody able to cross the placenta from the mother to the baby, which makes it pathogenic in diseases like erythroblastosis fatalis. IgG antibodies helps clear pathogens from our bodies in three main ways. First, IgG can opsonize microbes, marking them for ingestion for phagocytic cells. Second, they can fix complement activating complement by the classical pathway to kill the pathogen and attract other immune cells to the site. Finally, IgG can directly neutralize microbes or toxins produced to prevent further harm. That's all for IgG. You know what? Maybe I'll put in a wish for more Pixarized content. I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.